So can I start? Yes, yes please. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, first let me uh, thank the organizers of this workshop for giving me this opportunity to talk about our recent work. Uh, I'm Mikio Nakahara from Kindai University. Um, this work is a joint work with uh, my previous postdoc, Shingo Kukita. He is now a postdoc at Kindai University and uh, an NMR experimentalist, uh, Yasushi Kondo. And this paper is already published in New General Physics last year. And this work is supported by JST and JSTS. <clears throat> uh, we know that quantum system is always subject to noise from environment. So we have to study open quantum system. The quantum device often requires a, a small size environment, or ultra low temperature and or ultra high vacuum. And in these uh, conditions, sometimes the quantum dynamics can be non-Markovian. The decay of coherence is not exponential in these cases. Uh, in our work, non-Margovian relaxation is studied in a controllable way. <clears throat> and uh, we developed a theory and it is demonstrated uh, experimentally using NMR. And we solve uh, this Lindblad or GKLS master equation exactly and compare the result with uh, NMR experiment. Uh, this is uh, can I see, can you see my cursor, uh, the pointer? <clears throat> this is a conventional approach to uh, open quantum system. The system one, uh, which is called the principal system, is interacting with uh, the Markovian environment. Markovian environment means the environment has a very short memory. And in our work, uh, we, to, uh, we studied the simplest case in which system one is a one qubit system. And uh, this figure B is the subject of our research. Uh, instead of direct contact of system one with the environment, we have a system two between system one and system uh, and the environment. The, so and system two uh, acts as a temporal memory. So the information, quantum information of system one leaks a uh, space into the environment in this case. But in our case, the system two stores uh, system one information temporarily <clears throat> before it dissipates into the Markovian environment. And the couple, there is a coupling between system one and system two and coupling strength, strength is controllable. Uh, let me start with a very, very uh, brief introduction to Mar uh, the uh, Markovian uh, relaxation. Uh, let rho be a system one state. And uh, we want to find rho at theta time t by solving <coughs> the GKRS equation of this form. And L uh, takes the effect of the environment into account. And uh, this is the usual form of uh, air op uh, the <coughs> air operator called Lindbradian. And in our work, uh, we are interested in the case in which the environment randomly flips system one qubit. And in that case, the uh, air is written explicitly in this form. And sigma plus minus is the uh, usual uh, of sigma operator. In between in terms of the power matrices, sigma x and sigma y. And gamma plus minus represents the free plate, well, free flop plate of qubit. And we assume this is symmetric, which means gamma plus is equal to gamma minus, which I denote gamma i, uh, gamma one, one for the system one. 
And uh, here is uh, the Hamiltonian, but for simplicity, we assume the Hamiltonian is in zero. Then the dynamics is totally controlled by the environment. And uh, this is, it looks uh, complicated, but if you write down the component, if you plug in explicit form of sigma plus minus here, then it, it is easily solvable. And uh, this of co coherence of diagonal component of rho has the exponential relaxation, exponential decay with characteristic time two over gamma one. Well, actually, um, in NMR, we have in the laboratory frame, we have the Hamiltonian. Uh, this is the spin Hamiltonian under a uh, strong magnetic field around Z axis. But uh, if we move to a rotating frame by unitary transformation, then why? If you have, we, we take the interaction picture, we can get rid of this term. We can take Hamiltonian in the rotating frame to be zero. And then we, we get this uh, uh, DKS equation. Uh, now we look at the case when system two, uh, when we introduce system two, which is made of single qubit. So if you remember this picture, now system two is made, system one is made of one qubit, system two is made of one qubit, and there's an interaction of, uh, uh, of uh, this form, uh, which I come back later. So we have four by four density matrix of this for this combined system, one plus one uh, qubit system. Uh, the basic vectors are arranged in this way, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one, the standard uh, binary uh, basis. When, when, where the first qubit is the state for uh, system one, the second qubit is for system two. And we call, we assign an index zero to system one qubit and one to system uh, two qubit. It's a bit confusing, but sometimes we use zero one notation. Sometimes we use one two notation. And then the Lindbergian, uh, we assume the same form of uh, interaction with the environment. So the, these operators are just sigma plus minus. And each system, system one, system two, with uh, interact with the environment with strength gamma i. And gamma i, according to this notation, is gamma zero and gamma one. And according to this notation, it is gamma one and gamma two. So, and from now on, I will use gamma one for gamma zero and gamma two for gamma one. And sigma with index i uh, is the sigma operator, the power matrix for the i system. For instance, sigma mu zero, uh, this is sigma mu for system one and sigma naught for system two. So sigma naught is uh, two by two unit matrix in, in this uh, slide. Uh, the Hamiltonian is made of two uh, terms. One is this uh, interaction between system one and system two, which is taken to be the easing interaction. So Z component and Z component interact with strength J. And H omega one, this is quite important in our work. Uh, this is the, uh, we have a magnetic or external field acting on the X component of uh, system two. So it couples with sigma X of system two, which means the index is one. Uh, if you remember, index zero is for system one and index one for system two. And uh, we show later that omega one controls the effective coupling between qubits, uh, these two qubits. So J, is, we can modulate J by controlling omega one. And it 
And Omega-1 also controls the non-Markoviality <coughs> non of relaxation. Uh, GKS equation in this system, this uh, one plus one system, takes this form, which we separate into two pieces. One is for uh, system zero, and the other is for system one. And this part is put in the uh, system one. So D has the Lindbergian form plus this uh, commutation relation. And we solve this equation. It's, it is very complicated, but if we assume this initial condition, it is exactly solvable. The initial condition is uh, actually this is from the requirement from NMR uh, quantum computer. The first qubit or zeroth qubit of system one is polarized in x direction. So ket x is the eigenvector of sigma x with eigenvalue one. So we all know that. That uh, plus is written in this form. And system two qubit is in a uniformly polarized, maximally, sorry, a maximally mixed state, sigma node. So the initial uh, density matrix takes this form. Uh, so to solve this GKLS equation, we separate, we expand density matrix in terms of the SL2 generators of qubit zero, the system one qubit. So it is expanded in terms of unit matrix and sigma z and sigma plus and sigma minus. Uh, we also tried uh, expanding in terms of sigma uh, power matrices, but uh, we found this is, it gives a simpler form in later calculation. So A1, this time A1 is made of this uh, upper left, uh, upper left corner. So this is essentially A1, B1, and uh, uh, sorry, A1, A2, and B1, uh, A, uh, B1, B1 dagger. <laughs> I forgot B, yes. So A1, A2, and uh, 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 B1 is the right upper right com uh, block matrix. And B1 plays a very important role, although A1 and A2 can be negligible, can be ignored in uh, our calculation. So GKS equation is now decomposed into these three pieces. And it is important to note that the dynamics of B1 is independent of uh, A1, A2, and B1 dagger. This first and second equation have no dynamics if we put our initial condition, which means F A1, 0, A2, 0, and G A1, 0, A2, 0 is 0, which means A1 and A2 has no dynamics. So it's, it's a constant. So this part is already solved. And now we have to solve this third equation. Um, the expressed form of H is written in this way. So the initial condition for B1 is uh, it's a unit matrix. And factorize B1 in terms of, so we know that there is a Margovian relaxation coming from the coupling between system one and the environment. So we factor out this factor. And the rest is called B tilde. And we substitute this in factorization in the, the B GKRS equation. Uh, but it turns out that uh, it is that convenient to expand B in terms of power matrices and unit matrix. Uh, the coefficient of this expansion is called B nu. So now then this equation, the third equation is written in terms of the uh, vector form. Uh, DDT of this component is M naught times uh, this vector, vector B transpose. And M naught is, oh, takes this form. Uh, but uh, then since X has only component here, the X is decoupled from the rest of the components. 
and the initial condition says bx zero is zero, which means we can always take bx equals zero in this calculation. Then the rest of this equation becomes a three by uh, three component vector equation with m given here. And uh, this uh, eigen vectors and eigenvalues can be found from mathemat using Mathematica. And then this is a simple ordinary differential equation, which can be solvable exactly. Actually, B note. Uh, uh, after taking, uh, after deconstructing density matrix using these solutions and take the partial transpose, uh, partial, partial trace, with respect to the system two, we get system one density matrix, which takes this form. So what is important is just B naught. As I said, Bx is zero and By and Bz have dynamics, but it doesn't show up in the after partial trace over the uh, second system two. Um, so expressed form of V naught is not very important, but it is for it is it can be uh, express, expressed expressly in this way. U one and U two are eigenvectors of this matrix M, and uh, lambda one, lambda two are the eigenvalues of uh, this M. Actually, the eigenvalue appears in uh, uh, complex co complex conjugate pair, uh, and, and if I plug in this um, this uh, B note, then we get this form. So it has an exponential form and oscillating form. Now we are working. Uh, we are interested in a more general case, one plus n case, where n is greater than or equal to two, and this is the example of n equals four. We have a star shaped system network where the central qubit is called one and these four qubits or n qubits in general are called system two. And they are interacting with the, uh, the same strength J. So system one and all the components of system two interact with uh, strength J. So it looks this way. So this is a coupling between zero and I and we found over i equals one to n. So now, <clears throat> again, the system one qubit is, has index zero and the system two qubits have index indices i, i from one to n. And all these system two qubits are under a magnetic field with strength omega one. This is our Hamiltonian. Um, and the, we assume there is no interaction between among system two qubits. So system two qubits interact only with system one qubits. <clears throat> the Lindbergian takes the same form, but now the index i is from zero to n. And we assume, uh, actually in, we, we assume all the qubits in a system two are equivalent, which means J is the same. And also the uh, this coupling constant, decay constant gamma are the same, which I call gamma two, uh, because this, these are gamma for system two. <clears throat> and again, we can write down the uh, Lindbergh equation or GKRS equation uh, in this way. And now instead of single D operator, D uh, term, we have N D terms of this form. Uh, the initial condition is the same as before, <clears throat> uh, as the one plus one case. So uh, initially the system one qubit is polarized along the X axis, and the system two qubits are in a maximally uh, mixed state, and explicit form of this uh, is in, in this way. And again, we decompose uh, gamma n in terms of uh, unit matrix and sigma z, sigma plus, sigma minus of 
the system one qubit. And now it looks this way. And uh, we write down this, uh, the Lindblad equation in terms of gamma uh, A1 prime, prime, A2 prime, and B prime. And again, uh, if we plug in the initial condition, this A time and B time, uh, so A1 and A2 have no dynamics. Um, and the all dynamics appears only in Bn. Uh, just like in the previous case of one plus one uh, system. Um, and uh, the, this is the uh, GKS equation for beta. Uh, since there is no correlation among system two qubits, we, we assume system two qubits don't interact among themselves. So we can introduce ANSATS of this form. So Bn is made of uh, the product of independent n uh, terms. And again, we expand this uh, xi, uh, zeta, in terms of sigma matrices. And then it, we found this is, everything is parallel to one plus one case. We get the same m matrix for uh, this term. <clears throat> so we can simply uh, use the solution obtained for one plus one case. The solution is independent of i and uh, easily found from the one for the one plus one case. Uh, again, taking the partial trace over the second uh, system two qubits, we have uh, this form. So instead of B zero for n equal one case, for n case, general n case, we have this uh, Markovian relaxation times B naught uh, with power N. So for this term plays a very important role and we call this term beta N, uh, beta N and beta N. Uh, actually it is with this initial condition, this is a real function. So this term and this term are the same. Uh, to, uh, so as I mentioned in the beginning, it is possible to control non-Margovianity non by controlling omega one. So we have to quantify non-Margovianity non by introducing, introducing some measure. So first we introduce the press distance between two density matrices. Uh, and define the measure of non-Markovianity non in this way. <clears throat> so take the derivative of this distance. We expect the whatever initial state rho t and rho prime t you start with, they end up with the uh, maximally mixed state when t equals infinity. So we, we expect in Markovian relaxation the distance between two uh, density matrices becomes smaller and smaller as t goes, like this way. So we expect density, the distance decays exponentially in this way. However, if the time development is non-Markovian, then we ex expect there is a positive, the distance becomes, the, the derivative becomes positive, which means the distance uh, increases at some moment of time. And we pick up this contribution from here. So omega plus is the domain in which this derivative is positive. Like right? here, this red part of the time axis here. And uh, so we introduce this measure. What is difficult is uh, to evaluate this measure is we have to take uh, the maximum with respect to the uh, row zero and row prime zero. Uh, this measure was first introduced by uh, these people in 2009. But in our case, uh, we can maximize, we can get this maximization quite easily. We assume the initial condition. Uh, this is slightly more 
general than our, my, our previous initial condition. The first qubit is polarized along some axis, which has the angle theta from x axis. This is a pure state. And uh, the system two qubits are in the maximal uh, mixed state. And then at later time t, the reduced density matrix, if we repeat the same calculation, we find this e to the i theta multiplies bn. If we start from x axis, then this is one. But if we have e to the i theta here, then we have this, this factor in front of beta n. Then uh, press distance of two such states with theta one and theta two is given in this way. So this is maximized if sine theta, sine function is one, which means theta one and theta two are different by angle pi. So we put, uh, so this is maximized. So we put theta equal, uh, theta and theta plus pi in this, in this uh, integral for non Markovianity measure. And uh, since this, this is beta n, uh, we have the, uh, for this distance uh, we, with sine equals one, the distance is always beta n t. So we have the derivative of beta n, n t here, which is easily evaluated. Uh, th that's all for theory. Now we move to experiment. Uh, we use NMR uh, to demonstrate the theory. In NMR, qubit is a spin one half nucleus. And uh, we employed this uh, molecule called TMS. I forgot the exact name for TMS, but uh, this is uh, the central spin is silicon 29, and it is surrounded by 12 hydrogen uh, nuclei. So n equals 12 in this case. So the central spin is system one, and these 12 spins form system two. So this is a star-shaped system in which our previous analysis, theoretical analysis can be applied immediately. <clears throat> And it has a common coupling J and coupling between hydrogen uh, nuclei can be ignored. <clears throat> and this is put in a solvent, uh, ox uh, aceton D6, and the oxygen molecule uh, acts as a magnetic impurity that flips uh, qubit spin. So it works, the solvent works as the environment for this system. The Z energy there, so there under strong magnetic field, we use GO 500 megahertz NMR machine, uh, which produces very high magnetic field, but it can, so there is a Z energy term, but it can be eliminated by employing the rotating frame. <clears throat> and we first measure gamma one by uh, decoupling. Uh, it is possible as we, as I mentioned later, it is possible to decouple this J coupling by applying the magnetic field. So now the Hamiltonian in the rotating frame is made of the easing interaction between central spin and the I system two qubit. And uh, system two qubits are under strong magnetic, uh, under magnetic field with strength omega one. And by the way, J is uh, physical, in the physical unit, J is uh, this size. And the omega one is a static parameter proportional to the applied radio frequency field strength. So this Hamiltonian physically implements our theoretical model with n equal 12. And non-Markovianity non is controlled by adjusting by changing omega one. Uh, well, Sikon didn't mention about how to measure, uh, how to do, do measurement in the NMR, but in NMR measurement, we cannot directly measure the density matrix. We measure uh, 
magnetization along x axis, which means we measure sigma x. So we take the expect, we measure the expectation value of uh, this operator, sigma, um, uh, low one times sigma x. Uh, <clears throat> and the signal decays as time goes, uh, which is called free induction decay. For Markovian uh, environment, the free induction decay is the exponential, always exponential. So for our sigma uh, row one, our dense, reduced density matrix, we have this uh, product, uh, which is then beta n. So free induction decay just measures exactly this uh, factor beta n of diagonal component of uh, density matrix, reduced density matrix. When omega one is large, system two spins precess very rapidly, which averages out the coupling J. So here we have a picture and it is, uh, there is a coupling between qubit zero, uh, system one qubit and system two qubit. But if omega one is along X axis, axis large, the spin rotates around, 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 around the X axis very rapidly. So the coupling is averaged out. So in, a sense, in this sense, we can drop this term. <clears throat> then system one spin polarization decays as it, uh, exponential. Uh, it has Markovian decay and by which we can measure gamma one. When omega one is zero, uh, we have no Markovian limit. So J uh, acts with its full strength. Uh, so let's look at the experiment, experimental data by keeping the, this observation in our mind. So the top row is the theoretical uh, prediction, and these are the experimental uh, data. Uh, there is a great agreement between this, uh, uh, this is for decoupling limits, so omega one is large. Uh, it looks exactly the same. So, uh, by the way, the red point or red curve are uh, real part of uh, beta and black, part, black one is the imaginary part of beta. Uh, but as I mentioned before, the imaginary part is always zero. So it is zero here. And uh, there is a great agreement between these two data because uh, this curve is uh, the gamma one is, is gamma one in theory is measured from this decay constant. So by definition, they should be the same. And uh, this is for omega one equals zero case, and they reproduce the theoretical experiment reproduces theoretical results very well. And this is for intermediate omega, and there is a qualitative difference between the two, and especially the amplitude of the small, the oscillation doesn't decay very quickly for theoretically, but it decays quickly uh, for the experiment. <clears throat> it's because uh, omega one proportional to the field strength is not uniform across the sample. The sample has a finite size of one centimeter and the omega one is produced by RF coil of NMR uh, both of them have finite size. So there is a, a spatial inhomogeneity of omega one. And we introduced uh, this uh, omega one inhomogeneity with the size uh, sigma. And then we get this uh, quick, faster decay of small oscillation. This green curve is obtained by introducing this inhomogeneity in omega. And uh, this uh, the difference comes from many, many different origins. Uh, but at least for this uh, decay of amplitude can be explained by inhomogeneity of uh, omega one. And then we evaluated non-Margovianity. Uh, 
And then this is the blue curve is the non-Markoviality. And uh, this is, the red one is beta one, uh, beta 12 for our system. And for comparison, we, I have plotted this uh, green uh, dashed curve that is uh, beta one of this form. Roughly speaking, beta one and beta two are different in that beta 12, beta 12 is a 12th 12th power of beta one, roughly speaking. So it is smaller, and uh, when uh, beta one is small, then beta one, uh, beta twelve has no amplitude because uh, power twelve is a big power. So small uh, contribution of beta one doesn't appear in beta twelve. And uh, we initially we expected that non-Markovianity non decays exponentially as a function. At least uh, it is a uh, uh, it uh, the derivative of non-Markovianity non is always negative, but uh, there is a dip and peak here, and we wondered why there is uh, the decay is not monotonic. Uh, the reason, uh, well, the, this happens when omega one is around two, three, or five. Uh, this is a domain, the omega one domain when it is comparable to J. So there is a competition between omega one and J in that domain region. And if you look at, I, I have picked up these four. Uh, insets again here. So this is a case omega one equals uh, zero. This uh, green curve, green part is a part where this derivative is positive, which contributes to non-Markovianity non measure n. And here, as I mentioned before, this beta 12 has only contribution here and here and here. So non Margoviality decreases when beta uh, omega one is increased when omega one is uh, small. So it explains this negative derivative here. But uh, when omega one is large, uh, in, in intermediate, then this beta one is totally lifted up above zero. And then beta 12, uh, that is a power of uh, beta one with power 12. Uh, it is this oscillation is amplified and then beta 12 is this way. Uh, there is a uh, positive derivative part which contributes to N. And so it, it is large, which explains this peak. And uh, so there's a peak and a dip. So the, uh, and we compared this ex, uh, our theoretical curve with experiment. Uh, again, we have to, in, in to introduce the inhomogeneity of omega to have better fitting with the experiment. So by introducing the same uh, uh, inhomogeneity, as before, with this curve here. This curve here now looks like uh, this blue curve. And the red points are the result of the experiment. And uh, I should say that there is a qualitative agreement between theory and the experiment. There's a deep peak and uh, decays monotonically after some large omega one. And uh, it is remarkable that there is no fitting parameters in the theory. Uh, we have, once we fix the Gaussian distribution of inhomogeneity used from the free induction decay, uh, this theoretical curve can be obtained without any fitting. And these points are very close to the experimental data are very close to the theoretical curve. So summary. <clears throat> 
we proposed a theoretical model that interpolates between Markovian relaxation and non-Markovian relaxation. The total system is made of system one, and uh, system two, and the environment. <clears throat> Interaction between system one, system one and the two is controllable by adjusting the external field applied to system two, by which the relaxation changes from Markovian to non-Markovian. Uh, and we evaluated non-Markovianity measure, and uh, we implemented the theoretical model phase-free phase with NMR. FID signals and the N show qualitative and even quantitative agreement between theory and the experiment. And uh, omega-1 uh, shows a peculiar behavior, which can be explained by analyzing FID signals, at least mathematically. And uh, outlook, uh, it is possible to replace, uh, is it possible to replace N spin one half nuclei by a big spin? Uh, these days I'm working on the Majorana representation. That is a technique to visualize a higher dimensional complex vector in terms of multiple block vectors. If you have two dimensional complex vector, it can be represented by one block vector. But if you have higher dimensional complex vector, uh, it can be represented by a symmetric product of uh, two-dimensional complex vectors. So there can be, it, it may be possible to have a uh, Majorana representation inverse. So represent many spins by a big spin. And my question, is there any practical, practical application of our, our work uh, which uh, we are looking for? Thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Nakahara san. Yeah. So any questions from the audience? Uh, yeah, I have a very quick comment. Uh so could you perform the engineering on the NMR system to control the lung macro venality? Yes, yes. So we, we can control the coupling. I said the coupling is J, but it is for omega one equals zero case. If you apply finite omega one, you can deduce J. Effect, effective coupling can be deduced. Oh, on the other hand, could you control the number of the system two? Couple to the uh, system one, the spin one half. Yeah, yeah. So we, if we we use this TMS molecule n equals two, but if you use different molecule, then uh, like star shaped molecule with four spins for system two, then you have n equals uh, four k. And uh, actually, in the experiment, we have data from uh, other systems like. Uh, uh, CH3OH, it has n equal three, and uh, I think that they, he did the n equal four case as well. Uh, n equal one, and so we didn't show this in our paper, but uh, we have also data from n equal one case and uh, n equal three case. Okay. Uh, so it looks very promising, yeah. So maybe I have the last question about instead of a single spin in the system one, could mm -hmm. you? Able Two qubits in the system one and study the uh, uh, coupling or the entanglement through such kind of uh, NMR system. Yeah, in principle, what I can do, but the system, if system one is made of two uh, nuclei, then uh, star shaped molecule is impossible, I think. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, uh, I think it, it should be doable, yeah? Yes, 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 I think so. Yeah, I, I think, yeah. So if you have two nuclei in system one, and uh, if you distribute, say, four nuclei for system four with equal distance from these two molecules, two nuclei, then you have a, uh, you can reproduce this uh, system with two system one qubit. Yes, yeah, thank you for your comment. Okay.
So if there's no further question, yeah, please join me to thank uh, yeah, Professor Nakahara and all the speakers in the, this morning session. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope we can have a chance to see you in person. Yeah, in Taiwan very really soon. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so thank you all. And now it's the lunch time, so you can find the lunch bus outside. And please come back uh, by 1.30. <laughs>